News in the world of Bellwright, and this one is big, huge even. Villages 2.0 update. Oh my gracious, so many things. Where to start, where to start? They say this is a major milestone, and I gotta agree. Lots of major changes in the system, lots of details, lots of quality of life. Let's dig in. They say one of the most important changes for gameplay in this update is how you interact with villages after liberating them. Now you have the ability to call up a militia from the village to come and aid you, which can be very useful as you're dealing with stronger enemies. Villages also have a prosperity level, which will affect their population, strength of their militia, and possibilities for expanding it. To allow villages to grow stronger, you need to invest resources into them and protect the area around them against bandits. There's a whole new range of things that you can build in and around villages to help them become stronger and to increase the level of people that you can recruit to your cause. Another significant improvement is your own town customization. With buildable roads, you can make your settlement feel more real. It can help with planning out your village. And they work like roads in the game as well. You get that movement buff and decrease in stamina usage along with lots of new decorative structures that you can build in and around to personalize it. Tons of quality of life improvements that were requested, like being able to set up structure settings before the construction is finished, being able to fast travel with your companions along rivers with this new structure that they have called a river dock. You can find the location of specific items or structures in your settlement, relocate built structures, without losing the materials from them and switching your town hall to a new settlement. This update is compatible with old saves, but you might have some minor issues happen if you play on an old save, like forests that have been cut down before might respawn anew, although I don't really see that as a problem myself. But if you wanna keep playing on an older version or playing with old mods, there is a separate option you can use on a Steam beta branch called August underscore update. There's way too many features in this update for me to list them all, but I'm going to hit the highlights for you. I popped in and I've looked at a lot of the updates so far, and I gotta say I'm quite impressed. You'll notice now that they have a village prosperity bar that influences the militia strength. Also, when you're looking at the screen for a village that you've already liberated, the UI is totally new and fresh. It gives you lots more information. It gives you information about the villagers that are there that are able to be hired. You can go and talk to them, see who you like. You can mark them as someone you want to keep your eye on. They've reworked how bandit migration works to keep it more interesting, particularly if you have them in your settings coming back again and again. They have different strategic overlays to the map that you can choose from between topography and threats, several different things that display different types of threats in the different regions. You can create temporary markers on the map for items, buildings, NPC finder. You can deliver resources needed for village improvements automatically overnight instead of having to bring them manually all the way over to that village. They've made companions self-banage themselves when their HP is below a certain threshold, so no more walking around putting band-aids on everybody. Companions will also pick up the loot from bandit camp chests with you, and they've significantly boosted all the swords to make them comparable with the other weapons. They've added animations for vertical aiming for melee actions, such as swinging a sword or chopping. And the villagers are doing more things now too, like actually banging on the anvil when they're making things. And they've added partial Xbox controller support. We have a whole new system in the game called the Prosperity System, and that'll be impacting your raids, your militia, and the level of people that you can hire. There are 20 new quests, Lots of new voice lines and interactions with the workers and villagers. Lots of new POIs, new bandit camps, lots of visuals, new looks to the waterfall. There's a new setting where you can remove the interaction dots and functionality to display overhead icons and interaction dots only when you want by holding down the left alt button. You can copy structure settings from a settlement building screen for construction sites instead of having to do everything manually. Lots of new upgraded sound effects and tons of improvements and fixes. A few of the highlights that I like, liberation in a village 
now is triggered by ringing the bell at the bell tower instead of just automatically happening immediately when you're talking to the elder. That's a really cool touch. Also, if villagers find themselves getting attacked, they'll now call for allies that are nearby to come and help them out. And a really handy one is they've made villagers prefer food that they didn't eat and don't have an inventory for stocking up. So they'll be stocking up more effectively when you're going to go out on a mission. There are book merchants in all of the villages now. They made Lord Ashbourne non-respawnable after being killed by the player or allied companions. So he's no longer reincarnating. This is going to be a step towards going to the next phase in the game, I'm sure. And gobs of fixes and reworks. I'm excited to get into the details of this. Let me know if there's something specific that you want to find out about. If there's something you'd really like a guide on. I'm going to be going in with my main game, but there's so much new stuff. I might very well start a new save too. Remember to like and comment to feed that algorithm and consider free subscribing for more Bellright. Until next time, happy gaming.